Welcome, welcome everybody. Today's video is a very important video because it's one of the major, probably top two or top three, depending on how many inspections you have to go through. It's one of the most important ones that you need to pass. So I'm gonna give you today, I'm gonna give you 10 tips on how to easily pass your food truck fire inspection. Let's get into it. So before I get into the 10 tips, I wanna tell you a quick story about something that happened to me. So I was uh, luckily in position enough to build my food truck from scratch. I may have said this in a previous video, but I literally designed it from top to bottom, front to back, everything. So I was able to pick and choose what I wanted in there versus buying a used truck and having to swap out things or move things around and the whole nine. So, But one thing that I didn't know and I didn't, honestly, I didn't put enough energy into finding out was some of the fire codes that I needed for my specific city. So a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna tell you today is a blanket, if you will, but you also need to do the research on what you need in your specific city because in one place it may be one thing, in another place it may be something different. They may be the same, it's just, you just need to take this information and look specifically into what your city or your state requires, okay? But back to the story. So I had everything built from scratch. Um, I had it shipped to me, it was built in Florida. I had it shipped to me where I am in Ohio. And when I got it, I go through the health department, everything's cool, I go through everything, the whole, everything was fine. I go to the fire department to get my inspection done and literally the, one of the uh, fire chiefs told me, he said, hey man, can we take pictures of this? It was, I actually had a trailer, not a food truck, but it was a trailer. He's like, can we take pictures of this trailer because everything in here is so nice and new Everything's put where it needs to be, and a lot of trucks need to see something like this so they know as an example of what to use or what to do when they're building their own. I have no problem with that. I took that as, I was like, hey, man, do whatever you want. Just just pass me. Like, if you need to take video, picture, call your mom over, so you can, whatever you need to do, just pass me. So they do that, and we get to the end, and he said, everything's cool, everything looks good, but there's one problem. And the problem was that I had these, uh, and I don't, I can't remember the exact name of the type of piping, but it was more if you, it was more like a steel type of piping that went from my gas lines, um, from my, 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 my deep fryers, my flat top, my oven. I had a steam table, all that stuff. They had these, these certain pipes that ran the propane to the equipment. He was like, hey man, you need to switch these out from what they are to these flexible hoses that so you can pull your equipment out clean behind it and then put it back the type of pipes that i had over time the more i pull it out and put it back pull it out pull it back they can crack and you know what happens when there is a crack in a pipe and gas is going through it if there's any sort of flame or pressure anywhere everything is go boom so he was like to eliminate that you dying, the truck blowing up, and whoever else has a casualty around it, you need to switch out these pipes to these flexible pipes. So I'm thinking to myself, well, all right, you know, how big of a deal could it be? It's just some pipes. I'll go get the other ones. I looked it up. I priced them out. I thought that it would probably cost me three, four, five hundred dollars max. I didn't have that budgeted in, of course, because I didn't expect to be told that. But uh, you know, I was like, okay, okay, fine. Well, long story short, I go to do that. It ended up costing me two thousand dollars from start to finish to get this done. And a big part of the reason why I do these videos is to save you $2,000 of a mistake that it cost me. Because trust me, I did not want to spend $2,000 on that switch out. I didn't have the $2,000 for that to switch out on a surprise like that. It's just, it was bad. So it ate into a lot of my, my cash flow that I had going into opening. It ate into it. And you know, certain stuff like that could be the difference between somebody either getting in business or not or taking them two to three months beyond what they wanted to because of an expense like that, or you know, you can imagine. So the point is videos like this are to save you those type of headaches. So let's get into the 10 tips. Okay, tip number 10. All of the equipment on your truck that you're cooking with or you're using for some sort of, any sort of cooking, it needs to be commercial equipment. I'll tell you another story that I had where I had a microwave on my truck and it was just like a little household microwave. And they also told me, that I need to switch that out for a commercial. That wasn't as big as of a deal as the, the pipes were, but I need to switch that out for a commercial microwave. And the reason why is because a lot of the household products aren't made or designed for number one, that sort of volume, and number two, that sort of electrical output. The stuff can catch on fire. You can have some sort of electrical damage. You can, it's just 
commercial equipment is made specifically for high voltage, high usage, and volume. Your household microwave is not made to be used nearly as much as it is on a commercial level. Number nine, you need to have a handheld carbon monoxide detector and a gas leak detector. The reason why is, of course, you can smell gas if it's out in the air and gas is leaking, you can smell that, but you also need to be able to detect it because if you have a bunch of different things going on, a bunch of different smells, you're cooking, you're doing, you know, you could be somewhere, you could have a, a barbecue truck where you got a bunch of smoke going on, you may not be able to smell that in the air. The carbon monoxide detector, you can't smell carbon monoxide at all. If nothing's going on, you can't smell it. So you need to have those two things on your truck that are portable that you can take around the truck and, and detect different things going on if need be. Number eight, you cannot have any exposed wiring anywhere on your truck. It needs to be professionally done. It needs to be hooked up the right way. Electrical fires happen. Electrical fire happens when you mix it with some sort of grease or like a deep fryer or anything, like it's all bad. So you need to have all of your electrical contained, not exposed and safe. Number seven, this one's not necessarily um, a check off or on the list by your fire inspector. This is more just a safety thing that you need to know and do. When you're refueling your generator, you need to turn it off. I understand the want to keep it running and keep everything going while you're refueling. If you're somewhere for a long time and you're out of gas, you need to put more gas in it. But it's just as a safety precaution, just turn the generator off, refuel it, put the cap back on, start the generator back up. You won't lose, you won't lose anything on your fryers or you won't lose anything like that. You may have to turn your internet back on, but just turn it off, refuel, turn it back on. Number six. Check in with your local code on this one, but this may, this is probably the uh, probability of where you are, but you need to have two types of fire extinguishers on your truck. One is a portable five pound ABC portable fire extinguisher. This is the one that, you know, small ish issues where you can just pick it up, use it if you need to. If you're doing any sort of oils or like, let's say you use vegetable oils or some sort of animal oil or fat, you need to have what's called a class K. K is in kite. You need to have a class K extinguisher. This is used that will put that grease fire out pretty much immediately. So depending on what you do, if you're an ice cream truck or, you know, a cart or, you know, anything like that, or something, something frozen, you won't need to have the class K extinguisher because you're not using that sort of equipment. They probably will still make you have the five pound ABC portable extinguisher. But if you're like 90% of the other trucks that have cooking equipment and use different sort of oils and fats and stuff like that, you're going to need both of those, the class K and the five pound ABC portable extinguisher. But once again, check in with your local code to make sure because these things change all the time. You may need to have it this year and you may need, not need to have it next year or vice versa. So just check in with your local code, call your local fire department. I'm sure you can look up on their website. They probably have a PDF you could look at to save you a phone call, but check in with your local code on this. But just so you know, and just to be safe, even if you don't think you need it, it's always safe. Safety is always the best thing right so just you know class k five pound abc portable extinguisher for your truck number five as i mentioned in the story at the very beginning you need those flexible hoses for your cooking equipment i personally recommend I, i'm not sponsored by them they don't pay me to say this i'm not you know anything like i just i just use them before and i know how good they are but i would recommend you go with dormant hoses there are others out there that you know do the uh same thing but i've used them I know how they are. They were really good to me. I had no issues with them. Once I actually got them on and hooked up and used them, I had no issues. So I would highly recommend the dormant, but you need the flexible gas lines so that you are able to pull your equipment out clean, put it back with no chipping, no bruising, no anything like that that could cause big issues, like big, big issues if it was to, if you didn't have them. Number four, if you're cooking, if you're a cooking truck and you're going to use propane, your propane needs to be secure in the rear of your vehicle and 30 inches above ground is where it needs to be. Once this is another one where you need to check with your local code because some local codes had, had say it needs to be 36 inches. Some change it back down to 30 it can vary depending on where you are. So check with your local code on this, but I can guarantee you that it needs to be secured. It needs to be mounted on the back of your truck so that there's no issues. So it doesn't fall. And you, you can imagine how that will go. It needs to be secured on the back of your vehicle while you're driving 
hopefully while in use. Now, in some places, they'll tell you that the tanks can be removed, but if the tanks are removed, they still need to be secured to some sort of stationary object so that it prevents it from tipping over or being damaged in any way by anybody. So whether you can take it off or keep it on, it still needs to be secured onto something. I would advise you just to secure it on your truck, keep it there. That way the movement and the in and out and the back and forth doesn't happen when you're trying to take it off. But I can't say everybody's concept is the same, so I can't say you need to keep it here, you need to keep it there. But just know it's got to be mounted to something and it's got to be stationary because if it falls, it gets damaged, it's going to be a big issue. Number three, next to that propane tank on your truck, you need to have a no smoking sign that's visible to the public that can at least be seen, is visible enough that it can be seen about 25 feet away. You also need to have a no smoking sign on the inside of your truck that's visible that can be seen because you got a lot of gases going on you got a lot of stuff going on and smoking and accidents and fire like you just need to have a no smoking sign mounted next to your propane tank you also need to have a no smoking sign on the inside of your truck that's visible to everybody number two next to your propane tank and that no smoking sign you should have what's called an emergency shutoff valve or some people call them emergency shutoff controls basically what it means is if there was ever an issue inside the truck and you need to get that gas cut off it needs to be cut off fast and it needs to be you need to have a lever that just shuts it off not a turn knob that you keep you just need to have a, a valve that shuts it completely off so that you can contain or it's not even necessarily have to be some sort of issue like when you get done working you need to turn that stuff off shut the valve off cut the gas go in and shut off all your other equipment but you have to have some sort of emergency shut off controller valve on the exterior of your truck that's a marked that says emergency shutoff valve or emergency shutoff control it has to be marked and it has to say that and it has to remain obscure from anything at all times it has to be weather resistant and it has to have contrasting colors so that if there's any sort of weather or anything you can still see it so it has to be visible at all times you don't want it to get um, frayed or fall off because of rain it has to be when you buy these things like you know they have the the adhesive that will stick but you need to make sure that it's visible it's weather resistant and has a contrasting color so that people can find it in any sort of event at night at during day cloudy rain they need to be able to find it and pull it if there's some sort of emergency and number one the most important thing that you need this is also another one that you should check with your local code on because years ago it wasn't a requirement but then it became a requirement but that is that you need to have some sort of fire suppression unit inside of your truck you also need to have a hood for ventilation over your cooking equipment once again this all needs to be commercial grade if you have a hard time finding it you can look up say type 1 hood or commercial grade hood but you need to have these two things because they're really 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 important to the efficiency and the um, longevity of your truck that fire suppression is also used if there's a fire it's triggered by the smoke and it'll also put out a fire you can be you can have a fire behind your walls that you don't even know about yet and you won't realize it until it's too late well that fire suppression will know that it'll put that out seen trucks catch on fire behind the walls and it, i've seen it before so you need these things in case something like that happens you could have your back turned looking out the window talking to a customer and there's a fire going on behind you for whatever reason but that fire suppression is there waiting for something like that and it kicks in once that smoke is detected it kicks in all right, guys, so those are the 10 tips that will get you through your fire inspection. I may on its face sound like a lot, but literally five, six, seven of those things you can just go and get easily like the carbon monoxide detector, the signs, the all that stuff. Like you can just go and get that stuff in one swoop. It's really easy. You really need to pay a lot of close attention to your fire suppression, your hood, um, your electrical and all that kind of stuff. That's really, really, really important. Pay close attention to those handful of things, but all the other stuff are pretty easy. The goal is to keep you safe, to keep your customers safe, and to get you home to your family after you're done working. Everybody can enjoy life. So that's the goal of this. It's all about prevention. We want to be proactive. We want to be proactive with your safety, not reactive. That's the whole point of this whole thing. And like I said, it might sound like a lot to some. To some, it may say, oh, this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's really not. You need to pay close attention to a handful of things. Consult with your local fire department. They may have meetings. You go talk to another fire truck. Look at it. Look at their setup. Take pictures. And then you can go back and look at your truck and see what you need to do. You can ask some questions like fire uh, or uh, not fire, but food truck owners aren't mean or anything. If they have the time, they're not busy serving their customers. They'll talk to you about it and explain it to you and show you. There's some stuff that were code is not code anymore that I didn't mention because it's not code anymore. But 
Everybody's trying to work together to make it as functional as possible, but keep everybody as safe as possible. So until the next video, I will check you out later. Thanks for listening. Thank you.